Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. I don't know my password. Yes, anyone can send an email, including the kid you gave up for adoption 40 years ago. The time I got a warning for being too good at my job. We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I don't know my password. I work at an in-store computer repair shop and I have had a lot of worrying for humanity type interactions, but this one takes the cake. This was about a year ago, I had been working there for about two years at this point. A client and his wife came up stating he needed help with a computer he had just purchased a few days back. The couple seemed to be no older than 40 and didn't bring the computer with them so I figured it was a simple question. Me, no problem what can I help you with? Client, I just bought a brand new desktop but I can't get it to work. Me, I see. Can you be more specific? What exactly isn't working? Not turning on? No internet? These seem to be the biggest problems new owners have. Client, it turns on but I can't get into it. It says to enter a password but I don't know what the password is. Me, oh okay when you set it up it asked you for an email and password to create a Microsoft account. Just use the password you set when you were setting it up. Client, well I didn't set up no account. I don't know what it's talking about. Now I can't use my brand new computer. Me, we also see this continuously people setting up accounts and not remembering passwords, so I proceed to tell him we can restore the computer since he hasn't used it yet and set it up without a password for him. Client, I know you can. That's why I'm here. I already talked about it with someone over the phone. Me, trying not to get annoyed, oh okay, I didn't realize that I'm sorry. I just need your computer then I'll get the paperwork started for the restore and setup. Client, Looks at me like I have three heads, what do you mean you need my computer? I talked to someone on the phone about this already and said you could fix it? Is that not true? Were you lying to me? Me, utterly confused why he's getting mad that I asked for his computer, I can fix it sir, but I need the computer here to do dash. Client, cutting me off, no 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 you do not need it. When I called they said you could do it for me, and I just needed to bring the power cord. Proceeds to pull the power cord out of his pocket. Me, looking at him dumbfounded, yes sir that is true we do need the power cord, but along with the computer, so we can fix the problem with the computer. Client, proceeds to argue that I'm a dumb girl who has no right to be working with computers. He's slamming the power cable on the counter and just generally making a scene. He says I know nothing and he wants to speak with a male. Not my manager or my supervisor, but just a male. I tried to explain that if he just comes back with the computer I can fix it but apparently that wasn't a good answer because I should be able to do it with just the power cord. According to him any guy would be able to. At this point I'm pissed because he, the male, is the idiot in this situation but that's beside the point. So I go and get the least qualified male for him to speak to, our security guy. Big dude super nice but knows nothing about technology. He comes over and I try to explain what's going on. The client completely cuts me off again and starts explaining how I shouldn't be allowed to work with computers and just saying a bunch of derogatory things about me. Security guy looks at me looks at the client says what can't she do? Client tells him. Security guy laughs in his face and says no one can do that. Client attempts to grab the security guy, which was a bad move. He gets pinned to the counter and escorted out. All the while his wife is just standing there shaking her head never uttering a word. After this interaction I lost faith in humanity and changed jobs, I no longer deal with clients I just fix the computers. Yes, anyone can send an email, including the kid you gave up for adoption 40 years ago. I'm sure I'm skating the line here with this story considering the amount of tech support that was actually provided, but I've been dying to tell it. If I'm in the wrong sub please tell me, and suggest the right one if you can. Thanks. So anyway, I work at a college help desk. 
My job mainly consists of helping students and staff navigate the extensive and somewhat convoluted college system, more or less monitor the systems and alert admins when something is going wrong for students, or in general, online school program is down, Wi-Fi out, etc., as well as maintain the library computers and make sure the 60k piece of crap printers don't jam more than twice a day. A big one is emails. My college uses Swite, which is basically just fancy Gmail that the college makes students get when they register, and is the only email they'll send college-related stuff to. I get a call one day from a woman who sounds kinda panicked. Me, hello, how can I help you? Lady, hi, are the college emails private? Me, what do you mean? Lady, I mean I thought only the school could contact us through them, right? Just the school? I know the email is basically just a Gmail with some extra protections on it from the college, but otherwise works just like a normal email and tell her this. Lady, are you sure? Because I haven't put it on any sites or anything and I just got an email from a woman claiming to be the daughter I gave up for adoption 40 years ago. Yo, what? This floored me. I couldn't actually advise her on what action to take. All I could tell her is if she hadn't posted it anywhere there was a very real possibility that it was her daughter. Emails also aren't listed anywhere outside of online classes where other students can see them, so it genuinely was a moment. I ended up giving her my name and she said she'd come in and update me on what happens because she was going to pursue it. I was honestly hoping she would actually come in, though I didn't expect it. Lo and behold two days later she came to the desk and asked for me. It was her daughter. Through some question and answer stuff she figured out this lady was legitimately her daughter and had managed to track her, the mother, down through a lot of extensive file digging and found her college email through this, apparently you can request emails. She was so excited and stunned because she'd hoped forever her kid would reach out but she never did and she didn't even know where to start looking for her, she thought she'd moved as a kid, turned out she was in the same county of the same state the woman gave her up for adoption in. Now she has a daughter and a 19-year-old granddaughter, and both of them are coming up to visit the mother in September. She told me if I hadn't been able to help her eliminate the possibilities of it being a hack she might never have responded. It's very tech support light in a sense, and I don't really think I should be given that much credit, but I'll be if that wasn't the best experience I've ever had at my job. The time I got a warning for being too good at my job. Dollar me the one, the only, ghost Dan. Dollar boss man the boss man. Generally cool guy. Dollar type a boss man's wife. Co-owner. A type personality. Dollar other tech great tech, less experienced than me. Dollar customer poor old lady, who doesn't want to chit chat. So I worked for a on-site company, Think big box retailers on site support, but a smaller operation and generally more experienced techs. We dabbled in both consumer and business support. After a few months working there, I got called into a meeting between me, Dollar Boss Man, and Dollar A Type. My satisfaction ratings are through the roof. They are sending me on more problem cases because they know I'm getting it done. But there's a problem. According to Dollar Type A, I'm not billing enough. If I go out for a virus removal I'm billing for hour, while dollar other tech usually bills for 4 hours plus. Dollar type A, we need you to start billing more. Dollar me, uh, how do I do that? Dollar type A, well, we'll have you go on a ride or two with dollar other tech and see what he does. Dollar me, he doesn't do anything I don't do, it just takes him twice as long to troubleshoot and figure out the solution since he's only been doing this for a little while and I've got more experience. Dollar type A, well he's doing a great job. He billed 30 hours last week. You billed 16. Dollar me, so you want me to work slower or something? Blunder around a bit and pretend I'm troubleshooting? Dollar boss man, no we'd never ask you to do that. Dollar type A, yes. Dollar me, I'm extremely uncomfortable with billing people like that. Why don't I do a ride with Dollar Boss Man and see how he bills so much? I already knew the answer, they sent Dollar Boss Man to the more complicated jobs. So instead of going on one of his tickets, I grabbed one of mine, 
asked him if he'd tutor me on it. He agreed. I grabbed the next ticket in my queue. I'd already worked with the receptionists on how to take care of the smaller issues that weren't worth going out on. This one seemed to have fallen through the cracks though. So off we were. We arrived at the customer's house about a half hour later. Walked up to the door, rang the bell and dollar customer answered. I'd already been there a few times, she was a sweet old lady, friendly, but you could tell she wasn't the type that was going to spend a half hour chatting about what not. Dollar me, hello dollar customer. I'm here shadowing dollar boss man so he can show me a bit of the ropes today and give me some pointers. I'll let him take over. Dollar boss man, super charming hey there. So what seems to be the problem? Dollar customer, oh I just bought this new printer cartridge. I installed it but I can't print at all. Dollar boss man, oh no. Well I'll have a look and we'll get you printing in no time. Dollar me, I know what the problem is. Dollar boss man, fiddling with driver settings and that is? He didn't usually take these kinds of calls, so probably was unaware. Dollar me, there's a piece of plastic over the print nozzle. Happens all the time. Dollar boss man, takes out cartridge, looks at nozzle, sure enough, piece of plastic over it. Takes it off oh look it's printing now. Dollar me, yeah. They started doing that a while ago, now we get these calls about once a week. Dollar boss man, oh? Well okay. All fixed. Anything else we can do dollar customer? New antivirus? Need some backup software? Dollar customer, no I'm all set. What's my total? Dollar me, $67. Cash or check please. Talked with dollar boss man and asked him how he'd bill 4 hours for that. I left a bit later for greener pastures. We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. This happened a little while ago, when I was covering someone's vacation in the help desk. The call comes in at 8 a.m. Me, thank you for call. Her, I don't know what it's going to take to get someone down here. The printer needs a technician, and no one's come to fix it. Great way to start the morning and the call. Me, what's wrong with the printer? Her, it won't print. It hasn't printed for two months. And no one has come to fix it. I get the printer information, asset tag, display name and AD, location, and a cursory glance reveals no previous incident reports on the specific printer. Me, sorry to hear that, has this issue been previously reported? I don't want to issue a second ticket for the same problem, for obvious reasons. Her, no, I don't think so. But it hasn't been working since May, and someone needs to get down here immediately. We can't work if we can't print. I look up the printer in AD. There are 246 Q jobs, and the printer is reporting out of paper. Seriously. Me, is the printer displaying any errors? Her, yes. Me, and? Her, let me go look. So I wait about five minutes, then hear her shuffling back to her desk. Her, says out of paper. Me, does it have paper in it? Her, I didn't check. Do you want me to go look? Me, yes. If there is paper in there, take it out and put it back in. Maybe the trace sensor is acting up. Wait another five minutes. Her, there wasn't any paper. Slash facepalm. Her, how long is it going to take to get someone up here to refill the paper? What? Me, ma'am, we don't refill paper trays. That's on you guys to do it. Go fill it with paper and call back if that doesn't resolve the issue. There's some other things we can try. Her, long, exasperated sigh I don't even know what we pay you people for if you won't come when we need help. Click. If some of you are wondering, no. I did not clear out the 246 jobs in queue. The individual departments are responsible for ordering their own paper and toner cartridges, so it's a little bit of slash or slash petty revenge as well.